Everybody, welcome to today's live stream. We got a lot of things to go over, so let's just jump right in. So as the uh, title and the thumbnail suggested, Kathy Woods from Ark Investment did the right thing. She took profits. And uh, before we go over the story, there are some rules below me that uh, I think that a lot of you understand and, and uh, get. But if you're new, these are the rules that I have for myself. And you're welcome to, to use them at your, at your benefit. And the first rule is, uh, it's all gone. So everything you were, that you're looking to invest into, just understand that uh, don't invest more you can afford to lose because it's all gone. If you scam stuff or otherwise, don't use exchanges or excuse me, leave things on exchanges as far as crypto. Don't use leverage and take profits. And that's what Kathy Woods specifically did. So this is what we got. Kathy Woods Arc sold $6 million worth of Grayscale Bitcoin Trust amid the, mount, the monster rally we're having uh, so far. So ARK Invest sold over 200,000 shares in Grayscale Bitcoin Trust on November 10th as the Bitcoin investment vehicle rallied around 10% last week. ARK offloaded 201,047 Grayscale Bitcoin shares from its next generation internet ETF for ARKW, according to an update. This was valued at uh, just a paltry, tiny little 6.03 million. Now, she didn't sell everything. They didn't sell everything, and uh, they actually just did what any good investor does, and they take profits along the way. Grayscale Bitcoin remains the largest holding of ARK with a weighing of almost 10%, worth about $132 million. So when people are telling you as the next bull run approaches, and the bull run's coming, we can feel it. I don't know when it's going to be. I don't know what a blow off the top is. But remember these rules and remember that it's people that have been around for quite some time that you can learn from. Kathy would be one of those people. She's like, you know what? I've been in the game for a long time. I don't know where we're going to be in a month or 10 years or where we're at. So this looks like a pretty good rally. I'm going to take a little bit of profits along the way. I'm not going to sell everything. And I'm going to, if I ladder in, I will ladder out. And for me, I can see this is, for me personally, this is just what I do. I do the exact same thing. I don't see a problem with this. I don't, never understood the whole concept of uh, diamond hands to death. But that's what we have. And of course, this is a Grayscale Bitcoin trust. They did not sell uh, their Bitcoin per se. It is kind of like paper Bitcoin in a way. But a lot of people might say that you should never, ever, ever sell anything. And to me, I think that's a little bit crazy. And yeah, let me just think about that in the comment section. But um, to move on to the next story, don't worry about Grayscale. They'll be just fine. They got a lot of trusts. And especially one of those being the Solana Trust. Grayscale Salon Trust trades at 869% premium as institutions flock to Seoul. Now, we took a look uh, yesterday uh, with special guest Jerry V. Hall. We took a look at the major inflows that are happening as far as institutions. The majority right now, what institutions want is Bitcoin. Ethereum is actually on a decline and Solana is the second most asset that they are kind of aping into. So for this one, it's surprising, but not surprising. So the trust shares, and again, these are trusts of Solana, they're priced at $202 per trust, following a 653% rise since the start of September. The Solana, or Sol token, uh, started out at, uh, trebled to $58 from $19 when they actually started this trust. Pretty good timing, I gotta tell you. And CoinGlass shows it now holds 115,900 tokens, or worth almost 7 million on behalf of its clients. And the question you might ask yourself is, why, I always ask this question myself too, is, why are these institutions, why don't they just pick up the real deal? Why do they go to these trusts and, and get in there? Well, it's because they don't want to hold it like you or I. There may be provisions in their, in their companies. There may be ways they don't want to do it, or they just don't want to deal with the hassles of actually holding their crypto, either from themselves or for their clients, then potentially losing it. They'll pay that monster premium to somebody else to deal with the hassles, and they'll pick up the gains as it goes up. So Again, if you're looking to see which ones are uh, really massively rocketing up, Bitcoin and Solana. And does that mean that those uh, Solana is the best of everything that's out there? No, I'm just telling you, that's what the institutions are picking up. And we know that institutions are wrong quite a bit. And here's another story to prove that. Genesis. Genesis, one of the arms actually of uh, Grayscale, uh, they just reached a resolution uh, with Three Arrows Capital. Remember Three Arrows Capital? Those two gentlemen that uh, were responsible for, I think personally, crashing the majority of the market in 2021. So they just came to an agreement on a uh, $1 billion worth of claims. What I find, it's not surprising. It's just, that's just the way things are. What's amazing to me 
is the claim was for a billion and they settled down to 33 million. Amazing. Here's what we got. Genesis has agreed to settle a $1 billion in claims by defunct crypto hedge funds, 3 O's capital with a payment of 33 million. I gotta tell you, I wish the IRS would do that for, for people. I think they do actually, <laughs> now that I think about it. You know, you're like, hey, I owe uh, you know, $100,000. Why don't you just take, uh, how about you just take like, I don't know, 33 bucks. Sure, we'll do it. That's essentially what's going on here. And it's amazing to me that these guys, like Sam Bankman fried is in jail. I'm pretty sure Alex Mashinsky is gonna go to jail. And these two guys from Thero's Capital are just out free like it's no big deal. Amazing to me. A billion to 33 million. And this is from the documents of the courts. They state that the 3AC debtor shall receive an allowed general unsecured claim against Genesis in the amount of 33 million and full and complete satisfaction of the more than $1 billion in claims asserted against each of the Genesis debtors. So, I mean, amazing to me that these are how things work. So, again, be careful out there because the, uh, the smart money that we think is the smart money isn't the smart money. It's just big money. And they screw up bigger than we do as far as retail. And speaking of big money and screw ups, JP Morgan. So this was a pretty good story, uh, a lesson in FUD. Uh, there, there was a report out and JP Morgan comes out and says, you know, the market enthusiasm may be misplaced. And JP Morgan has had a love hate, mostly hate relationship with Bitcoin and crypto and digital assets, especially Jamie Dimon. But uh, this one I thought was pretty interesting what they said. So in the report, the sentiment they state has been driven by the belief that a greenlit spot Bitcoin ETF would attract new investors. Approval would represent a victory for the crypto sector and its ongoing conflict with the SEC, thus softening the commission's attitude towards digital currency. So they're saying that essentially the reason why there's a big rally, and I got to agree with them here, is uh, one, everybody's talking about the spot Bitcoin ETF that could potentially happen, potentially in January 10th, and all of them get approved, or maybe in March uh, when the majority uh, have their deadline. I think ARK is actually in January, and then of course you've got uh, uh, Fidelity and BlackRock and all the rest of them around March or so. So they're saying that that's the first narrative, and the second narrative is because the SEC keeps losing their battles with these different companies, Grayscale being one of them, Ripple being the second one. And of course, they're looking at uh, them bending the knee and actually approving that spot Bitcoin ETF. They're saying if these things, of course, all this happens, then of course the market rallies. That's what they believe, the majority. But JP Morgan analysts do not believe that. They are dubious about both arguments. They say that it's more likely that existing funds will move from current Bitcoin products into ETFs rather than new capital being invested in crypto. The bank analyst said that ETFs have gotten little investor notice since being introduced in Canada and Europe. So two things there. They're saying, look, I mean, this is great that the spot ETF happens, but it's not going to be new people. It's just going to be a rotation of capital for people who were in the market at some point, or they're going to rotate out of something else of these, these grayscale trusts or whatever else. They're going to put it into the spot and that's it. Nothing else is going to come in or very little because of what's happening. I thought about that and I go, you know, that might be, that might be reasonable at some point. However, uh, I had to take a look as far as like with Canada. This was uh, November third, twenty twenty-three. Global assets in spot Bitcoin ETFs hit four point one six billion. Global assets invested in the ETFs tied to the spot price of Bitcoin now total four point one six billion. Nearly half of that, or two billion, is invested in the seven spot Bitcoin ETFs that have been launched in Canada since twenty twenty-one. I gotta tell you, I mean, a couple billion dollars, I guess that's some kind of interest. I think people are not doing too bad. So maybe what JP Morgan is talking about is maybe them just saying that's what we think it's gonna be, but maybe that's what they want it to be for whatever reason. I will let you conclude to what you believe that actually is. And then on top of this, this ETF, as far as spots, there's a new one by the CBOE. This is from Marty Party, give them a follow, links in the description. Host of Crypto Spaces, Crypto Alpha, entertaining guy. And uh, this has been going all over, but Marty was the one that uh, I saw first. And breaking, the CBOE is to launch crypto margin futures in the USA January 11th. Amazing the timing of that as it coincides with potentially when a spot ETF can be approved, which is January 10th. I don't know. It's crazy to me. Maybe I'm just uh, looking into things too much in the tea leaves because I want this to happen. 
CBOE Digital become the first U.S. regulated crypto native exchange and clearinghouse to enable both spot and leverage derivatives trading on a single platform. This is bullish news for spot ETF approval with an approval date 8th of January for BlackRock. Oh, excuse me, 8th of January, not 10th of January. This usually means approval is imminent, as was the case with gold. So there's two things to break down there. First, about futures and CBOE. This is margin futures, as, as they say it. There's a little piece that I put together as far as CBOE and futures. I don't know if you guys were around. A lot of you have been around since 2021. Some of you have been around since 2017, and even few of you have been around since like 2012 and 2013. However, in 2017, when everything was going crazy, I got in around October, November, and I started to hear about the CBOE futures, and we thought it was the end all be all. It was going to be so awesome. And of course, everybody said, and it's a funny thing. Well, not everybody, but uh, John McAfee and a host of others said that Bitcoin would go to 100,000, a million dollars. It was inevitable. It was just math. And because of the CBOE coming in, the Bitcoin futures, it was bound to just blow off, just blow up. Well, that actually didn't happen. And what happened was a lot of people just shorted Bitcoin. They destroyed it. Well, they, it's markets. I mean, like we just talked about with Kathy Wood, right? She took profits. People that short the market take profits and they do what they want to do. So in this situation, the CBOE, Bitcoin futures, I'm not saying it's the same thing. I know it's different. But I'm just saying, I just, uh, it has a bad memory for me because two days after that, or after, two days after the blow off top in 2017, the 15th of December, the CBOE features launched and it pretty much spelled doomsday and it sent us into a multi year uh, bear market. And then also, what Marty talked about here was this usually means approval is imminent, as was the case with gold. If you take a look here at gold, this is from. Uh, DL News, and it talks about the launch of the first gold ETF provides an example of how spot ETFs can democratize an asset. And they're speaking specifically about Bitcoin itself. The first spot ETF for gold, November 4th, 2004, GLD launches. And you're going to see how it just goes into a vertical spike. Doesn't that look nice? That looks nice. I'll take that. However, you have to remember something. This was on November 4th, 2004, and the price was roughly around 400 bucks. Maybe 450, not for sure. But uh, we can take a look over here, 2004, five, six, seven, eight. Where's this line? Yeah, it took about four years to double. So I know the asset as Bitcoin is much different than gold. One is, one is finite, one is scarce, one is heavily portable, one is not portable. One is easy to transfer, one is not easy to transfer. And of course, I just personally own a lot more Bitcoin, just I think like a lot of people do. But just remember this, that even though these things are happening behind the scenes, and I believe a, an ETF is good, especially if a spot gets approved, I don't want people to believe that uh, Bitcoin can go to a million dollars overnight. I think it's going to take a bit of time. But regardless, we got time. I think we're in the right place at the right time. And this will conclude for the news. I just want to go over... Uh, these indicators. There's, there's a video I have. There's a link in the description. It talks about when I'm going to sell 80% of all my crypto. And there are six, seven, eight different indicators that I'm going to use. One of those being a Pi Cycle Top. There's a great website called LookIntoBitcoin.com. It's free, 100% free. And uh, there's one indicator, one of many that we uh, use in the in the video. And this is just for Bitcoin. And the and the Pi Cycle Top. It's when you take the 111 day moving average. And you when it when it crosses over the 350 day moving average times two, once these cross over, you see usually a top. And this is retro. It retroactively took a look in 2013 and it nailed it. At retro took a look in 2017 and nailed it. And actually, it didn't nail the absolute top in the last cycle, but it got pretty damn close. It, the 350 day times two flipped over the 111 day moving average. And that was the price of 63,334. So as you can see right now, well, first of all, there's two things. Price usually goes up. There are some bull markets. We have blow off tops. Nothing has changed. These are four year cycles. I still believe in them. We are down in the, in, in the depths right here, but we are rallying again. But look at this. We are starting to start to come together. So we are moving in the right direction. And these are the things that I like to see. 
And of course, when these things cross over, I will definitely be doing a video and talking about if and how much I've actually sold. But this is just for Bitcoin. The one thing I do like about Ben's site, Into the Cryptoverse, links in the description. He's having a sale right now. You can get 10% off the first month, and there's a big sale on top of that right now, I think until the think Thanksgiving. I don't remember. But what's great about Ben's, he takes the 111 day moving average, 350 day moving average times two. And you can take that not just in Bitcoin, but you can put it in a bunch of different things. Matic, Tron, Cardano, Litecoin, Toncoin. Uh, actually, I think he did Alamo. Oh, damn. He must have improved it. Must be working on the, <laughs> see, he must be working on the bear. But again, take this one with a grain of salt because this is why I use several indicators, but this one's pretty cool. Again, if we take a look at this, we can see that it didn't call the absolute top in 2017. It actually hit it at uh, around 190 or so. But look how close it came over here. Again, it's a pretty darn good indicator and you would have sold at $600, $700, not too bad. And then over here, 1,000 February, it missed it by quite a bit, I would think, 3,400. But again, look how tight it was. If you're gonna layer in, that's why I like to use this. You can layer out doing the same thing. And then also, let's see, what else, what else, what else? How about XRP? XRP did a better job, actually. For XRP, it nailed it here in 2017. Actually, no, it nailed it. This one here, the end, beginning of 2018, 2.93. That's pretty good. Got pretty darn close over here. And of course, now it's coming together over here. So again, these are just one of the indicators we take a look at uh, for selling. If, again, taking profits, moving from there. And there's a link in the description, you can watch that video. And lastly, for all my fellow Puerto Ricans who live here in Puerto Rico, uh, just be aware that the time is coming up when you have to put in, if you are an Act 60 person like myself, you have to donate to charities. And you have to donate to those charities up to $10,000. That is the mandate if you are an Act 60. So don't forget, because sometimes I do, which is thankfully what I do is I roll in and I donate to Protechos every month. And Protechos right now, they could really use a lot of your help because a lot of different things that they're doing right now. And what they do is they help by, they are a nonprofit organization here in Puerto Rico and they help to rebuild rooftops so people can actually live and function uh, in the island. And uh, I give them quite uh, liberally. So if you could help me so much, that'd be great. Or if you're not an Act 60 you want to donate, so much the better. There's a link in the description. Uh, it looks something like this, rebuilding roofs and strengthening Puerto Rico's workforce. And uh, it would be just great. Again, uh, Puerto Rico 1101 and US 501c3 tax exempt. All donations are tax deductible. And you can satisfy $5,000 of our annual requirement through a donation to Protecha. So with that one, maximum of 5,000 if you're Act 60. But again, you still have to, you still have to donate 10,000. So other ones could include places like I also donate to, Carlos Con Casa, where they donate money to for community, economy, for jobs, uh, ecology, start uh, clean up places, and of course, uh, the education system to help them is there. Or Amigos de los Animales. And if I could actually have a functioning back, not a ruptured disc like I have right now, we do walks every Sunday and I donate to them as well. So again, Puerto Rico, Puerto Ricans, X60, don't forget to donate your 10,000. Don't forget. That's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive, but that's it for today. Like today's